Today is June 9, 2009. I am Andrea Mott. It is a pleasure to conduct this interview for the Dakota Memories Oral History Project in Napoleon, North Dakota. Can you please state your full name, including maiden name? You want my maiden name, mm -hmm. Esther Mertz. Mm -hmm. And what is your married name? Op, Esther Mertz Op, no. And when and where were you born, Esther? I was born in the house where my parents lived, that was south of Dawson. Have you, have you ever heard an interesting story about your birth? Not really. It must not have been too exciting or something. They didn't say much about it. Did, do you know if a midwife or a doctor was present? A midwife was pregnant, that I, present at the time. So. Was it a neighbor? Do you know who it was? Right, and Grandma was there. Oh, your Grandma? Yeah, Is that right. your mother's mother? No, my dad's mother was there. Well, uh, can you share some of your earliest memories with us? What's the earliest thing you remember as a child? Well, one of the earliest things I remember was when my parents took me over to my grandpa's place. Well, they were all older and they were all still at home. My dad was the oldest in the family also. So when, I, when my parents came over there, they all fought to carry me. Each one wanted me. They almost tore me apart <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and uh, they, well, usually the oldest girl, Melita, Aunt Melita, she got to hold me more. But then there was Jacob. He always wanted me so much, too. He liked children. And then I got horsey back rights, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and about how old were you when, when you? I think I was about three years old, because I can remember that quite well yet. And how often would you visit your grandparents? Oh, we went over there at least, I'd say, practically once a week at least. And, uh, we didn't live too far away from there. So how far away did you live from them? Oh, about a mile and a half. Oh, okay. So maybe uh, it was closer to two, but it was close. And can you tell us a little bit about your grandparents? Well, my grandpa I can remember real well. He lived to be pretty old, but grandma, she d passed away quite young. She was only 58 years old when she passed away. So the only thing I remember about Grandma when we went over there, she had some <laughs> berries in the garden and gooseberries and currants. And I just loved those. And I'd always say to the younger girls in the family, let's go to the garden again, have some of those berries in there. <laughs> so we'd go. But they said, let's not tell Grandma that we're going there because she wants to make jelly with them. But we went then anyway. <laughs> Was that pretty frequent? Sneaked, sneaked in there. Yeah, and I can remember during the Depression, you know, there were so many sand domes. By those cherries and those bushes, they were just tall and it blew it all in there. And then they, it practically covered them up. The lower part, the root and all the stem, Part that was all covered up with sand. So we sometimes scratched it away a little and picked. <laughs> Some were covered. <laughs> so did you still eat them? Did they even grow during the Depression? They did. did. Well, they watered some too, I think. They watered them some. But uh, I know I liked them real well. Those cur little red currants, they were good. And what other things would your grandmother grow in her garden? Well, I'm sure she had all kinds of vegetables, but we weren't too enthused about that. <laughs> all we wanted was the fruit <laughs> that I liked. <laughs> and what about your grandfather? You said you remember him pretty well. What, what do you... Oh, my grandpa, whenever there was butchering time, that's when grandpa would come over. And, uh, well, when grandpa came, he brought his stool and he brought his pail and his tub and his knife. And he cleaned the intestines and the stomach of the pig. And, uh, well, we had to carry water and carry water. And there he sat in his little chair, and he'd scrape and scrape and change water and change water. And that I'll never forget. And it was usually around Thanksgiving Day. And I never liked that because it was usually around my birthday then. And we had to carry water and carry water. 
did your family celebrate birthdays? What? Did your family celebrate birthdays? Not too much. We didn't have too many of the celebrations. Usually we did get some ice cream. Sometimes Mom made a cake too, but you know how it is when we butchered. There wasn't much time to have a big celebration. <laughs> and would the rest of your family come over to help with the butchering at all? No, just the grandpa usually. Grandpa. Yeah, sometimes grandma came along, but not too often. So was this a full day affair? That was a full day affair. That's for sure. Sometimes even into the night quite a bit. Well, then the after they had the intestines all cleaned out, you know, and washed and washed and scraped, and then he'd blow into them and sh hang them up to see how clear he could see through them and <laughs> how clean they were. <laughs> and then he'd want us to get a little vinegar and soda, soak them a little bit yet. And then they were filled with meat, and usually the upper part of the head was used for Schwarzenmorgen, they call that, or head cheese. And the lower part of the meat on the pig's head was used for liver sausage. And then it was all put into a boiler and boiled. And after that it was put into the casings with a, I don't know what you call them, really, a stuffing deal. They stuffed them in then. And then they had to go back into the boiler to boil again. But they didn't dare boil. They were just a hot temperature. You had to keep it pretty constant, or else they'd burst on you. Then you had nothing. So you had to watch that very closely. And sometimes one or so would bust if you got it too hot. So <laughs> then you, and after that, usually they laid them down, and then, like the stomach, that was pressed, and they put a board on it, and maybe a little rock on top, so it was got nice and solid. And um, how much sausage would your family make? Well, they sometimes butchered like two or three pigs in the fall. And we had like a big tub full of meat that was ground up for sausage. And where did you store it then? Well, we canned a lot of it, and a lot of it was put out, so it was cold. That's why they always butchered around when Thanksgiving, you know, when it was cold. So, yeah. And what did, um, um, what else do you remember about your grandfather besides him helping with the butchering? Well, I remember him in church, you know. He'd lead this Bible study and he'd read the scriptures in church and he'd lead the singing in Sunday school and even for the congregation, he'd lead the singing also. Um, and what kind of songs would you sing at church then? Was it all in German or? It was all in German. I even started confirmation in German, but then we changed to English. That was the time when we changed over into the English language. So, so you grew up speaking German. Did you learn English in the classroom or? Well, I learned a little English from my dad's sisters, you know, they were younger. Dad's youngest sister was only three years older than I am. So I learned some from her. So I did understand, mostly, when I went to school, what they'd ask, and, but uh, still I didn't, couldn't talk that well, but I could understand it at least. And uh, where did you go to school? I went to school in... Kidder County and little country school and we'd usually, Dad would take us with a sled and as we got older, well, then we walked and usually till we got over to Grandpa's place and then they would walk with us till to school. <laughs> and how far was that? Well, that was about two and a half miles, I think. So. Pastor, we were talking a little bit about where you went to school when you were younger. Can you can you describe what it was like going to a country school? Well, we first went to Kidder County School, and uh, well, there my aunts and went to my dad's sisters, 
So we usually walked till to their place and then went along with them. And when we were smaller, of course, Dad took us over there and then we went with them. And I think it was in the sixth grade or seventh grade, we changed over to Belton School, south of Dawson there. And how was that different than the one you went to in Kidder County? Well, we were older and then my dad got us a little horse called Daisy and he got us a little cart. <laughs> so we drove most of the time, unless it was too terribly cold and we wouldn't drive it because it was so cold sitting on that little cart and holding the reins to drive that horse. And then we had such a big hill to get up and sometimes she was just a little Shetland pony and uh, she couldn't get up the hill hardly. So some of us had to get off <laughs> till she was up the hill. <laughs> and um, when it was too cold to go to school like that? Well, then my you? dad usually took us. Would he take you in a... a in a sled, car? usually in a sled then he took us. Yeah, we didn't want to go when it was too cold, so he had to use the sled to take us. And then sometimes he wouldn't go all the way the neighbor there, the Stottles, they, their dad sometimes took us all the way. They took turns in the evening too. They met each other and from there on we went out again and to a different sled and he took us home then. <laughs> so. um, and what did you like about school? I liked history all the time. I really liked history. Did you, was it common to play a lot of games? Yeah, we played Andy I over and 500 and... What is 500? Well, you catch the ball and then you score. Okay. Yeah, it's with balls mostly all. So. And what about games inside the In Pom Pom Pull Away we played also, where you use a rope and which side was the strongest would pull the other one over. <laughs> Were those pretty evenly matched? <laughs> we tried to, but <laughs> sometimes they weren't too evenly matched. Um, and, and how was the one-room schoolhouse? Was it a one-room schoolhouse? That, that yes, they were all one-room schoolhouses. Can you describe what it looked like? In well, we had a big chalkboard up in front, and then there was a big pot-bellied stove in there where you had to bring the wood in and start the fire every morning. And, Sometimes they had some coal where it would have a little fire in yet overnight, but sometimes you had to start from scratch, and that was usually the duty of the teacher to get it started then. So it was a lot of work. <laughs> and and then, how was the seating arrangements? The heating? The seating. What was the seating? Oh, we had desks, you know, where usually some places we had single ones and then some places we had double ones. I think as we got older we had some double ones. And Do you remember how many students were, were at that school? Well, they were usually the right 10 or 12. That's about it. We didn't have too big a group in our school. And what about when you moved to, what was it, Belton? Belton. Um, how many students were at that school? I think there were around 12 also. Yeah. Is that, were you the same area where you went to high school? No, I took high school by correspondence. And what was that like? How did you start that? Well, see, my dad didn't believe in us going to high school. He thought after we finished eighth grade that was enough schooling. We should stay home and help work. <laughs> and, uh, well, I wanted to go on. I wanted more schooling, so I finally talked him into it to go to correspondence, and then I usually went to school in the one-room schoolhouse too. And I had the teacher as a supervisor who gave me the tests to take. And then all of my papers were sent to Fargo. Um, and how, how many years did you do this? Well, I had done that four years. Mm -hmm. yeah. did they, how did they send your diploma? No, I didn't quite finish. I think that I needed about two credits or three. 
I don't know why I quit then. Was it because you were needed more on, on the family farm? Yeah, that part, and then I got married after that, too, so. And what year was it that you got married? 47. I'd like to talk a little bit about farm life. What was it like back at your, your parents' farmstead? <laughs> well, I was the oldest in the family, so I usually helped Dad cut the hay, and when it was harvest time, I had horses. That was all done with horses. I had to drive the header box, and uh, I raked hay, and my younger sister, Aline, she usually helped mow at home where I went out in the field and helped my dad all the time. So. Yeah. Besides uh, driving the header box and, and raking hay, what other kinds of chores would you do? Well, I'd done mowing too, mowing hay and and then milking cows. We milked quite a few cows all the time. and They were all done by hand. You know, so there was no milk machine. <laughs> Did you enjoy that chore? <laughs> well, I didn't even mind it too much. It was just like it had to be done, and if the cows behaved and weren't too bad and didn't kick, it was fine. But when the flies were so bad, then it wasn't the easiest job then, but otherwise I didn't mind it. And about how many ca or cows did your family have? Well, we milked around 20-some usually. And did your family have any other livestock? Oh, yes, there were pigs and chickens and geese and ducks and... I don't think we had sheep much, but all the rest of the animals we had. And of course, horses. And, and you, you mentioned little Daisy. Were there any other horses that you grew up with that, that you used? Well, she had a little colt that was called, we called him Tuggy. And he was just like a little pet then. Oh my goodness. We had a herd cattle too in those days. And uh, well, when she had that little colt, colt we played with him out there and laid him down and put our coats under his head and helped him up and everything. He was just like a little pet. <laughs> he was so cute. <laughs> but he got taller than the Daisy did. How's that? I think he was bred to a taller horse or something. And we rode him too. But that Daisy, she was one that She'd get scared of any little thing, and then she'd just stop short, and then you'd fall off the front of her. She'd just throw you off. She'd just jerk back, and that was it, and you fell. <laughs> and I fell off and broke my nose from that. How old, you, how old were you when that happened? About 17. <laughs> so how long did your family have, Daisy? We had her a long time. She finally, I was married already when she finally died. Mm -hmm. So she got so old, she couldn't eat no more. And, so. mm -hmm. and did your family have any other animals that were more like pets than work animals? Well, all I can remember is little rabbits. We had, I had a little rabbit once that I thought the world of. And, <laughs> and one night, my mom was busy working in the kitchen and he ran across there and she stepped on him. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That was a sad day. <laughs> what was your rabbit's name? <laughs> I don't even know if I had a name for him, but I know it was a sad day. And then we had a lot of, I loved, loved kittens, cats all the time. We had cats, many cats around. What about dogs? We also had dogs. Were they used for herding? Yes, we took them along usually when we had the cows out in the pasture or took them out in the, to watch them. And, we had dogs with too. And um, can you describe what the farm looked like? Oh, we had a little house, and uh, well, it had one big room where we had three beds in. And uh, well, then when the other group of four kids were born, then my parents bought a house, a big house, and had it moved there. So we used the little house as a summer kitchen and went to bed over in the big house at night, <laughs> slept in there, and on Sundays we 
at company. We went in the big house, too. Was that pretty common? I think it was kind of common in those days. I know we always had to clean it up on Saturdays. We had to do the dusting, and well, we were hardly in during the week, except for sleeping in there. But and how did um, what were the sleeping arrangements like? How did you how did that work with three beds? Well, us girls usually there were two girls and two boys. Well, like when the others came, then we had more beds, you know, and had the big house. But before that. The boys slept in one room, and the girls, and well, in one bed, I mean, and my parents, and all in the same bedroom, though. It was a pretty big bedroom. And then there was just a little living room and uh, kitchen, yet yeah, that's all there was. And a little entrance there was to it. That's and, all. And how long after that was it that your family built the bigger house? They had it moved there. And, uh, oh, I know when these other kids were born. They got that house, and I don't even know what year they've had that house moved there. But uh, that was really something when we got that big house. Then. Were you still living at home then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was home yet. I think I was about maybe 17 when they had it moved. What do you remember about that new house? Well, it was roomy and it was nice. We thought it was really nice <laughs> at that time. And then after that, you know, they had a power plant too, where they had better lights, their own power plant, and so. Where was the power plant? In the basement. We had that in the basement. So. Uh, so when was it that your family switched to electricity? It must have been around 50, I think, when they got, everybody got electricity and was put in. So. And um, when you were still living in your in, in the little house, what, what would you do as far as bathing arrangements or? Oh, <laughs> we had one tub and, well, the little ones would take a bath first and then the older ones would take the bath in there first, and they keep adding hot water to it as it got colder, and that's about the <laughs> arrangement it was. <laughs> How often would, would you guys be? Well, when we were out in the field, we had to do it usually every night, but otherwise it was usually just once or twice a week. And all the water had to be carried in and, of course, heated, you know, so. And how far away was the water source? It wasn't that far away, which was one good thing on the farm there. We didn't have it too far to carry the water. What was that like in the winter? Uh, it was cold to get the water in and bring it in. Whose chore was that? Well, either me or, well, when I was the oldest, I usually had to do that. And later on, Aline, my sister, done a lot of that too, so. <laughs> was us girls mostly. The boys, when they grew up, they had to help outside more. So. And what other kinds of chores would you do in the house? Did you do a lot of the cooking? Not too awfully much. I didn't help. My sister done more than I did. Like I said, I usually went out in the summertime and helped my dad. So I didn't get... And do you, can you describe the, the fields and crops on your family's farm? Well, the, during the Depression, there was nothing that grew. I know my dad said, I don't even remember too much. All I remember afterwards, well, sometimes the fields started blowing so bad during the Depression, while well, nothing grew hardly. And then when they had a little grain growing, then it would blow over and just kill it off. So sometimes he'd take a wagon and put some straw on and then drive the horses out there and scatter straw over it to prevent it from blowing so much. And um, was your family able to cultivate many crops at that time because of the blowing dust? Yeah, well, they never got any crop hardly. It was really bad. Not even grass grew or hay. They had some of those thistles that grew, and, well, we had to cut them. They had cut them, and, well, then 
was bad for the cows. They got diarrhea so bad, and it was a bad feed anyway, but it, they survived with some straw yet, I think, and whatever they could feed them. Did your family come out pretty well from the Dirty Thirties? Yeah, they did afterwards, you know. Things got better in the 40s or so, and they prospered then. But I can still remember how there were just bangs of sand blown, because our soil was kind of sandy there. and Man, it just had piles and along the fences. and. You can still see that today, I think. <laughs> um, and how, was it like feet of sand? Feet? Oh, yes. Would it get into the house? Oh, it blew all over, yeah. And was there a way to prevent that? I don't, not that I know of. Just cleaned it out afterwards and, and did till it blew again. <laughs> and how did your family keep the house cool in the summers? Well, it got pretty warm sometimes. We just had to endure the co heat, the cold in the winter and the heat in the summer. <laughs> Did you use coal in the winter then? Oh, yes. Coal and also manure, you know, my dad, he uh, hauled it out, and then they had horses to tramp it down. They'd go around in a circle and tramp it, and after it was dried out, some, then he had to spade it, cut it up with a big spade, and... Then it had to be stacked and stored for winter fuel, too. It would, that it, would usually last the whole season? Yes. So they used mostly that. They couldn't even afford to buy coal, I think, till later on, you know, when they bought coal. But so what did you do before that? Well, that's when he had all that manure mm -hmm. that they used to keep the stove going. Well, the house was small, and they just had that little house there and they used manure that was cut up, you know, and so. And uh, what were the roads like leading out to your family's farm? Well, we had bad roads. They, the summertime they were all mud when it rained and the winter time, well, we had a lot of snow those years and we didn't get out sometimes for weeks or get mail even for weeks. We didn't get mail. Then sometimes somebody would get into town and they'd bring it out, the mail for the whole neighborhood. So they'd all come there and pick up the mail. <laughs> How far was it to town to get it? Well, to Dawson it was 12 miles about. So. And how often would your family go to town? Not too often just when they really had to, when all the stables were gone, you know, like flour and what they used to make bread, and then they had to go to town to get some more. But other than that, they just try to survive as long as they possibly could. And then, like grain, there was a, a factory or set up in Gackle, I think it was, and they'd done puffed wheat they took the wheat there, what they had raised, if they had any, and they puffed it, and then that's what we had a lot, puffed wheat, cereal. And then, of course, the cows at the milk, and so. And would your family sell certain things in order to be able to pay for groceries? Well, yeah, we separated the milk and sold the cream, and... She took it to Dawson. They usually took it to Dawson and shipped it to Mandan, to the creamery up there. And then we did make our own butter at home and had a churn. How long would you have to churn it? Pretty long. <laughs> Sometimes especially. <laughs> sometimes it went together good and sometimes it didn't. So. And what other kinds of homemade Oh, we'd make cottage cheese, too, from the milk. And, and how do you make cottage cheese? Well, you just leave it, your w milk set till it turns sour. And sometimes they had little tablets to put in, too, where it would hurry it up 
but <laughs> usually you just wait until it gets sour, leave it set so it's warm, and then you'd put it on the stove and heat it up a little bit, and then you could pour the whey off, and you had your cottage cheese then. Was that a long process? Well, for well, for waiting, yeah, you had to wait a few days till it was good and sour. And, and what other kinds of things would your mother bake? Make? Well, she do quite a bit of made cakes a lot. Johnny cake was a common cake we had that was made with cornmeal, and we had that a lot, which we thought was really good. And, and any well, she done all the bread too. They didn't buy bread like nowadays. So. Would she make any traditional German Russian dishes? Yeah, she did, but not as much as Grandma used to make. My mom didn't make as many of those. Oh, she made like the cheese button she made, and she made Knipfle, and which we all liked. Made dumplings, but I know some had that a lot more than what we had it, but we had it too. So. Well, then uh, what would your grandmother make? Grandmother made it a lot, all Do you that. Remember any of those? Well, she made the strudels a lot, and they were good that she made. So, mm. well, um, since you were raised on a farm, do you remember what the town kids thought of farm kids at that time? Well, I don't know. We didn't get to town very often. Usually in the summertime was the only time we got to town. After we were out in the field all day, Dad promised us we could go along to town on Saturday nights. That was a fun deal. We looked forward to that. <laughs> and what would you do on Saturday nights in town? Run around in town. <laughs> we had our friends. We'd get together, and sometimes they had roller skating later on, but we just visit, and we'd get a few nickels to spend for ice cream and get an ice cream cone and so. What about movies? Well, we went to some, but first later on, like Tappan and Dawson didn't have any movies there. When we got older, we went to Napoleon here where they had, a, had movies, but then we were like 17 years old, 16, 17. But. So what were... Um what were dating, dating practices like when you were younger? <laughs> what would you do on a typical date? Write letters mostly. <laughs> I'd done a lot of letter writing and had friends write me too. We never got together much, but kept in touch with letters. And We didn't date as much as they do now. We were, I was probably like 16 years old before I started dating. and so. That was mostly through letters, and then sometimes they'd show up once in a while with the car. But <laughs> So when was it that you met your husband? How old were you? Well, I was teaching then. They, uh, they had when there was such a shortage of teachers, and then they had teacher's exams, you could take them, and if you passed, they, you were certified as a teacher. And uh, I took the exams, and I passed them, so I got a certificate to teach. And, and what were those exams like? Well, they asked all kinds of history questions and English. You had, on every subject, you had a test. And, oh, like, who discovered this and who discovered that and all those things, you know, about different people. And, and then math and English and same thing, you know, verbs and Did you study pronouns. Huh? Did you study a lot? Well, I, I did when I took correspondence a lot, too, you know. And I know that much that I took the test and when took it by correspondence, where a lot of the girls that went to town school, they flunked the test where I passed it. What do you think that says about your study skills? 
well, that shows that I studied and, you know, that it's a good school, the NDSU Correspondence School. And did you get a certificate when you passed your exam? Yes. What did it say? Well, that you were qualified to teach. Mm -hmm. Did it say what grade? And we had all, grade? all eight grades, you know. I, that one year, they even brought him from another school. They fired that teacher, and then they brought him, and I had two schools, actually. They increased my wages some, and that was like $150, $160. I think that year I got 180 Had two schools, actually. <laughs> and where were the schools at? They were in German Township, where I was teaching. Um, now, were your parents strict with religion? When you yes. Were religion was an important part of our life. Can like, you explain why? <laughs> we always had to go to church every Sunday. That was, unless we were really sick, and we weren't supposed to do any sewing or things that weren't absolutely necessary otherwise, or cut out dolls. We used to cut, me and my sister, Eileen, we cut the catalogs apart. You know? On Sundays? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, dress them up. Those were our paper dolls, and we dress them and cut out purses, and we loved to do that. But we didn't dare let Dad see that we'd done that, so. <laughs> we had a sneak. after church? Yeah. Oh, yeah, not before. <laughs> we had to sneak that, and we always put it away if we heard he was coming then. <laughs> and which catalogs would you usually cut them out of? Oh, we had Sears and Montgomery and National Bellas Hess. And there was another one from Chicago, I think. I don't remember what that one was really called, but... We just waited till the new catalogs come. That was a joy. So we got to use the old catalogs, cut out. <laughs> Were those about the only toys you had growing up? Well, we I did have a big doll, but by the time the rest all used it, it fell apart, I think. We didn't get very many dolls. I got that one. I think my grandma bought that one for me. I said I wish I'd have kept it. It was a nice big doll, but like it was, the rest didn't have any then, and then. They played with it, and oh, it. so once it made the rounds, it was yeah, it was pretty well used. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so did nothing left of it. Did the guys have any toys that they would play with? Well, they did have a few little wagons and toys that they used, but we didn't have nothing compared to children nowadays. I can't believe it. Like our great grandchildren, well, even our grandchildren. Oh my goodness. They have rooms full. Rooms full. Yeah. Uh, now I'd like to go back to your Sunday activities. Um, what religion were you raised? Lutheran. Lutheran. Yeah. Um, and what were church services like at that time? Well, in the earlier years, we didn't have church every Sunday. And then the pastor would come, I think, once a month. And he came all the way from Streeter, Pastor Nagel. And uh, other Sundays, then somebody would have to read the scriptures. It was usually my grandpa. And, well, there were a few others like Mr. Ryer and Mr. Wary done that too. But uh, I know he done it, and later on my dad did too. But the earlier years. And then finally it got to where this old man, he'd come part ways and he'd stay with some of the families then go the other part the next sun, Sunday, start on Saturday. and It was quite a trip by horse, you know, and buggy. How far was it? Well, that, I don't know, that must be about 40, 35, 40 miles. That was a long trip for that old man. And as he got older, well, then he finally left, I think, and then they got where they got pastors more often and Finally had one every Sunday, but it took many years, I know that, where they didn't have a pastor every Sunday. They just couldn't get a pastor every Sunday. And what church did your family attend? The Lutheran Church. Lutheran. Well, what was the name of 
the church. Oh, the Glickstall mm -hmm. Church, yeah, the Glickstall Lutheran Church. Yeah. We attended that until my parents never moved. We stayed on the same place all the time. And now my brother lives on there. So. And, um, were there any particular seating arrangements in church? Yes. <laughs> Can you describe those? The women sat to the left and the men to the right. When did that change? Oh, it must have changed in the 40s sometime. And what uh, about the kids? Kids? Where did the kids sit? Where they were at? They sat with parents. They usually sat with the parents. And sometimes they let some of them sit alone, but if they didn't behave, they got their ears pulled sometimes. <laughs> Your siblings ever have that problem? Well, the boys did more or less once in a while. <laughs> Us girls didn't have that problem, but the boys. So. Trouble sitting still. Right. <laughs> Giggling or something and making noise. And what were some of the religious activities that you participated in while growing up? Like what would you mean? Like anything associated with the church that you. Oh, would Easter do? and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Well, at Christmas time. We usually went out and while well, we waited for Santa to come, you know, and by the time we came back from the church program, he was usually there and had brought whatever we got, but we usually didn't get much. Sometimes we got a game for the whole family to share, and sometimes we got clothes, each one got cap or something or pair of gloves and but uh, then we did go to grandma's house usually too and during the holidays like Christmas and then we got some candy there mostly and peanuts and of course grandma always had honey cookies she made and they were good so <laughs> and you mentioned a Christmas program with the church what was that Oh, yes, we all had to participate in that. The church wasn't that big, so everybody in the congregation took part in the church program. I know I think I recited pieces and was in the place till I almost got married, 20-some years old, I think. And then we always got a bag. Our dad would always buy a little bag for us. He'd donate money, so we all got a Christmas bag. And... That was the tradition. And what about Easter? You said. Well, you Easter was Easter. another event. My dad always said, you know, that they had gone out and saw the Easter lamb in the east. Well, we went many times, but we never saw it. He said it was just like an image, the whole image in the east of the Easter lamb, Jesus with the lamb. And he said that they had seen it, but but he said it's got to be perfectly clear, perfectly clear, but I don't know. We never got to see it. We got up early. You had to get up just as the sun came out. And he said that's when they saw it, but I don't know. We never saw it. He got us up early many mornings when he thought it was clear. We never saw that lamb come out, the picture of Jesus. So I don't know if it was real or if it was just imagination. I still don't know to this day. <laughs> Did he ever tell you what? It, it, whether or not it was real? or? Well, to him it was it. real. He mm -hmm. definitely said he, they saw it. Their grandpa had taken them over to a hill, and they were by that hill. And when the sun came out, there was that image of that Jesus and that lamb. But we never saw it. To him it was real. Was this something that... He learned as a young boy or from his grandparents who lived in Russia? Well, when they lived here in America. That's when it started? Yep, when he said he saw it. But. And um, you said a little bit earlier something about being confirmed. Can you explain that to us a little bit? Well, confirmation, you had to memorize a lot in those days. We memorized all the catechism and Bible verses, many, many Bible verses, and it was a lot more on memorization than what they do nowadays. They don't hardly memorize anything. 
compared to what we had to study in. How long would it take usually before you could be confirmed? Well, we usually started when we were little until we were about 14 years old, until we got confirmed. Like here, they only, well, I don't know if they have it, that they study the whole catechism. See, we went through the whole catechism and uh, till before we could get confirmed. So <laughs> I know they don't go through the, the catechism like that nowadays, that I know. Um, and were you, were you ever able to question your religious teachings? Well, I didn't really question them that much. I just believed what I was told, and that's... Um, and were your parents strict because of religion? Yeah, I, I'd say my dad was. My mom wasn't that strict, but dad was. He was brought up that way. I think his dad was strict. And that's the way he figured we had to be brought up to. <laughs> so. And um, back home, was Sunday dinner or supper different than what you would eat any other day of the week? Not usually. We usually had a lot of soup on Sunday. Ma would usually have chicken butchered or something like that, and she'd make noodle soup. And that was the common thing for Sundays. And chicken noodle soup? Chicken noodle soup. Do you still do that today? I still make quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> Not every Sunday, but still do make some. Uh, and what was a typical meal for a church celebration when things would, would occur at church? Would, they, would people in the congregation come together and cook a big meal, or did they do you that? You mean for weddings or something? Or, or a church celebration, weddings? Well, you know, there weren't weddings. too many church celebrations. They did come together, like for... Uh, Mission festival, they had people, but then usually they invited them. They didn't make the meals in the church, you know. It wasn't prepared, made to prepare them there, but they'd invite people in, you know, if, for mission fest. And, and what was mission fest? Well, that's to, they'd collect money for the missions overseas mostly. How did your family view other faiths? Do what? How did your family view other religions? Well, I don't know. They thought everybody has their own right to. <laughs> but they didn't want us really to go with Catholics. <laughs> I don't know why, but... And nowadays, you know, there's so much different there where they interact so much more. Like we have services here in town now where the Catholics and the Lutherans go together and were there. At that time, it wasn't like that at all. They just kind of stayed separate. And how many churches were in, were in your area at that time? Well, there weren't too awfully many close by. There was the Evangelical and there was a Reformed church. There were no Catholics. They just come in later on. So. a little bit about, I'm going to go a little bit back to your school days, since we, we went over that rather quickly. Um, when you transitioned schools, did that affect you at all, you or your siblings at all? No, I don't think so. It was pretty easy? Yeah, we knew those kids anyway, because most of them had been to the church where we went to. They came to the same church, so... It didn't really affect us at all. So what was the reason that you did have to switch schools? I really don't know what the reason was, why we had to change. I never did really know why. But and what do, you, what do you remember the most about your I know it was grade? my seventh and eighth grade, you know, when I changed over to the other school. What do you remember the most about grade school? mean what we studied or? Or just what, is there any memory that stands out more than the others? Well, the cold winters, that's what got me a lot of times. It would have been fine, but freezing so much. We had it far to Belton. We had three miles to go over there. 
And boy, that was cold sometimes. That was the worst part, was the winter time to go to school. <laughs> and how many months of the year did you go to school at that time? Seven. Yeah, it, I know we froze many a time, man, alive. Fingers almost fell off. <laughs> and Burned so bad afterwards that. <laughs> when you were a child, what what was your what do you think was your most stressful childhood experience? Well, I don't know when something got killed or somebody died. <laughs> I remember this real good friend of mine that my folks, they had a little store there, a country store, and they'd always come over to my parents and they were over one night and we had so much fun playing outside. And then the next day he was crushed between the store and the walls of the store with the truck. That was a shock. <laughs> How old was he? I think he was 12. I'll never forget that. And what, what, in contrast, was your happiest childhood memory? Oh, I haven't thought about that at all yet. I don't know. <laughs> Anything jump out at you? I don't know. <laughs> Happiest childhood memory. Can you think of anything? Yeah. Okay, we'll jump to the next one. Um, what was the most adventurous thing you did in, in your childhood? I didn't do too many adventurous things either. <laughs> My brother done more of that. Kids like to hear them later on. I know that part. <laughs> Even the grandkids like to listen to some of the things when you repeat some of that stuff. <laughs> so kind of to tell them, you know, to show them what it was like. Yeah, right. They ask sometimes, what was it like in the good old days about this and that? So. <laughs> and what do you say? Well, it was different than what it's now. I tell them sometimes about all those toys. I said, I can't believe all the toys and things you got. We'd have been in heaven if we'd ever had anything like that, I think. I said, we had one item we got, and that was about it, till it was wore out, and then we got something else again. We did get a dress usually at Christmas time. Either my mom would sew it, or else she'd order one through the catalogs. But as far as going to town and buying a dress. There was no way that they ever bought a dress. <laughs> Do they understand when you tell them those things? That it was they can't believe it, that it was like that. Yeah, it's hard for them to believe it. I said already, you know, there was never any store that we got to to buy a dress where they go to stores and buy everything. And I said, we never got to go to stores. We were growing up already and until <laughs> we finally got to Bismarck, you know, the shopping places where they had clothes. All the little stores, all they had was shoes, you know, the main things that you absolutely had to have, and shirts, they had some. But as far as dresses were concerned, there were no dress stores, really. <laughs> so many luxuries today. Whereas yeah, wearing... that's for sure. Or else we just never got to go there, I know that much. So, so you, do you hope that this is something that they will be able to look back on and... Yeah, I do hope so.